Longitudinal data sets are very common in research. What are longitudinal data sets and what is longitudinal data analysis? In the simplest possible case, a longitudinal data set is simply one time series. So we follow, for example, how one variable within one case develops over time. However, more typically, we deal with panel data. In panel data, we have multiple observations of multiple variables of multiple cases. Here, for example, in Woolrich's book, the introductory data set for panel data analysis is repeated observations about different cities. So we have 150 cities, each city observed twice, so we have 300 observations in the data set, and then we have various different uh, variables related to crime statistics of these cities. So this is a panel data set. And this kind of data sets, they are longitudinal because we have repeated observations that can be indexed on, on two different values. First, we have the city ID and then we have a time index. Importantly, whereas the, as the city ID does not really have an order, the time variable is ordered variable. And that's, that what, that's what makes this kind of data sets special. So we have two levels of, uh, or two ID variables. So this is a multi-level data. And on the final level, the ID variable has a time order. So this makes it a longitudinal data set instead of simply a generic multi-level data set. So how do we then analyze this kind of data? There are a couple of different ways depending on what we are interested in. The simplest possible way to analyze this kind of data set is simply to ignore the time dimension. So simply assume that this is just a multi-level model multi-level data set, the time index does not really make a difference. If we, uh, we could use uh, GLS-RE, GLS-FE or just normal multi-level model for, for analyzing the data. These models don't really consider the time and even if we reorder the variables or reorder the observations, we shuffle or randomize the time variable, the results would be exactly the same because these models just take the clustering of the data into account but don't concern the time ordering of the observations. So we can simply use these multi-level techniques and, and ignore the longitudinal nature of the data set if we are not interested in the longitudinal nature. Then there are two things that we can study from a longitudinal data set that is not possible using cross sections. So the first, uh, set of observations. This is basically, uh, we could do cross sections as well and, and get their answer. But for these two things, we can't use cross sections. Why I say two becomes clear in a moment. So the first class is effects of time or, or trends. And we want to analyze how something decreases or increases or first goes up and then goes down over time. And what explains why certain cases go and have different, different time trends. Here we would use multi-level models with time as a predictor or perhaps latent change models or, or some other kinds of models. But these models are actually pretty simple because there is nothing special in time as an explanatory variable. So time is just a variable like any other, just the fact that it happens to be one of our ID variables does not really make a difference. For, for this kind of models. Then we have these two uh, classes where we model the effect of a variable on its future values or we model the change in a variable. So we compare y at time zero against y at time one. We take the difference and then we try to explain that difference. These are in practice the one and the same thing. So uh, when we, whether we calculate the difference between two observations of y that are, are come after one another over time or whether we model y as a predictor of its future values, there are problems that we encounter are pretty much the same. So these are basically the same thing as, uh, as long as analysis is concerned. So this uh, first set, no time or no dynamic effect. So we use the term dynamic effect to refer to a case when a variable predicts or explains its future values. If we don't have time effects that we're modeling, if we don't have 
dynamic effects, then we can simply use a multi-level model with cluster of standards, and that's not really a longitudinal model. So we have two cases then about longitudinal analysis. We have models that model time as an explanatory variable, they model time trends, and then we have dynamic models where y predicts its future values. These uh, models of time trends are very simple in a way because time is just a, a variable, it's just an observed variable, there's nothing, nothing special about time. However, what makes these uh, a bit more complicated to understand or requires some amount of studying is that there are some special labels given to special cases. For example, if we have a latent change model, latent change model basically refer, refers to a model where we have a time trend that is linear and uh, the slope and the intercept vary between the different observations. So that's basically just a random intercept model of time, but for some reason uh, we refer to it as a latent change model. And you have to just know this terminology. If it wasn't for the terminology, we could just apply multi-level modeling or structural ecosystem models like we do to any other data set and there wouldn't be anything special to know about how to model time. Latent change score model is another uh, term, term that is used for a model that is simply an application of a more general model. Then we have some statistical techniques that are general but they tend to be used in management research in the context of modeling trends. One such example is the latent class model. So the idea of latent class model is that it's a, a latent variable model but at least one of the latent variables in that model is actually it's not continuous and normal rather it's a category. And we could have for example different time trends and we could say that uh, a case follows uh, the first time trend with 70% probability and second time trend with 30% uh, probability. And our goal of analysis is to discover these time trends from the data and then try to explain, try to understand which variables explain which of these data time trends that we discovered each case follows. So I have a, another video about our latent class models. Then dynamic models, this is the, the challenging case in longitudinal analysis. And dynamic model is a model again where y explains its future values. And what makes these complicated is that the unobserved causes or the error term tends to correlate over time. And why is that the case? If you think about uh, the x variables and the y variable in your model, quite often if we calculate autocorrelation for correlations for those variables, they tend to be pretty strong. So there's tendency that a company that is profitable now is also profitable the next year. If a company is large now, it doesn't suddenly become a small company the next year and then become a large company again. The company size tends to persist. So there are these factors that we observe tend to persist over time. And if the factors, the variables that we actually observe correlate over time, then it's unreasonable to assume that those variables that we don't observe that go to the error term would not correlate over time. And whereas in multi-level model where we don't have an effect on, on y on itself over time, this is pretty simple to deal with by using cluster over standard errors. When we actually have y as a predictor of itself, this leads to a tricky endogeneity issue. And, and these equations show the endogeneity issue. So we have y1 that depends on y0 plus some error term u1. Then we have y2 depends on y1 plus error term u2. Now if the error term correlates over time, so u1 and u2 are correlated, we can see that there's endogeneity problem because y1, because u1 is a part of y1 and then u2 which is a part of y1 correlates with, uh, with u2 here. So u1 which is a correlated part of y1 correlates with u2 here and that causes an endogeneity problem. How we we'll solve this endogeneity problem leads to uh, some, some tricky situations but it basically uh, we need to have instrumental variables for that and we can, we can be creative about the instruments. I will talk about that more in, in another set of videos. And Conceptually, one of the challenging things in dynamic models is actually 
whether you should use a dynamic model or not. So this indeterminate problem, this is more like, like an engineering problem. You can solve it from the data, uh, assuming certain things, which you of course need to justify based on theory. And some can be justified partially empirically. But whether you actually need to have the lag dependent variable as an explanatory variable. That is a, a challenging question. I've actually uh, asked that uh, some authors whose work I, I review or as a, uh, in my role as an editor and the response for whether why people have the lag dependent variable as a control is quite often that it is a convention to do so in a particular field. So instead of uh, having thought through whether uh, the, the lag dependent variable as a predictor is actually required which complicates the analysis process considerably people tend to uh, assume that it is required based on the fact that this kind of models are commonly used. So the, uh, to summarize longitudinal models can be categorized into two different classes. We have models of time trends and then we have dynamic models where y variable explain or predict its future values. These models of time are fairly simple because time is nothing special, it's just a variable like any other. And these dynamic models, they uh, lead to uh, endogeneity issues and they are actually pretty tricky to understand.